Hello, welcome to this next uh, Substance Painter tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be having a look at height maps, uh, some displacement, and um, we're going to look at a new thing, uh, new thing uh, to the channel. Anyway, uh, the compare mask. So let's set up a little scene, and I'm going to import a high-res plane that I've just created. Uh, it should be down here somewhere. There we go. Uh, 2048 I, I don't want the tile workflow uh, so that should be okay there we go so should import in a sec and just for demonstration purposes uh, I'm going to turn on the wireframe because that will help me kind of show what the displacement is doing uh, so if I come down to uh, here we go show the wireframe it will show my wireframe and you can see it's you know it's got a reasonable amount of geometry in it but um, for displacement we're going to need a little bit more uh, but we'll deal with that in just a second okay so let's turn that off okay so one of the very first things I want to do is just add kind of a terrain like uh, aspect to this so I'm going to add in a fill layer uh, when it gets around to it and then on the channels I only want the height so if you press the alt key and click height it will turn all the other ones off so that's handy saves a bit of time uh, so we'll then go to our textures and I want just a simple Gaussian I think there we go so we'll drag and drop that into our height channel okay so you can see it's doing something uh, but it's not especially impressive and we need to just update our tessellation settings so on your shader settings, if you click on the little pyramid, which is your displacement and tessellation, uh, it should be enabled. Uh, I'm using the height uh, model for the um, the height channel for the displacement or for the uh, height adjustment. And I can increase or decrease my height here, depending upon you know the sort of ranges I want. And I want quite a range um, because this is a terrain. It's not like a very narrow surface, which is just you know little bumps. Uh, so let's actually let's turn it up to one just for fun. And you'll notice it's all very jaggedy, and that's down to the resolution of my original plane. Um, there's not enough in it for it to actually displace properly. For displacement, you need to have a lot of geometry. It's not like a normal map. Um, you know, with the normal map. Uh, calculates a normal per pixel um, so you can have you know very few pixels and get still a detailed map uh, for displacement you need geometry so in the realms of substance painter that's tessellation here so I can kind of tessellate my model as many times as I like and depending upon your memory constraints and such like uh, you can go up as far as you like so that comes out nice and smooth now so that looks good so let's close that out uh, one thing I do want to do is sort of reduce the frequency of this this is all very spiky and I want it to be a bit more broad so on the uh, layer we've created I'm going to take the scale in the noise parameters and bring that right down until I get kind of a few kind of hilly bits Okay, so one last bit on this little setup. You'll notice it's actually quite difficult to see our mesh, and that's because actually what is being shaded is this flat plane, and it's being displaced, but the displacement isn't, you know, affecting the shading area, uh, the normals of the uh, of the plane. But we can fix that. So if we add a new uh, layer on here, and whoops. What's going on there? Did I add a fit, uh, the wrong kind? No, I didn't. Uh, so I don't want anything on here except perhaps uh, normal. So let's press Alt and Normal. And then on this layer, I'm going to add a filter. And we're going to use the Height to Normal filter. Because what that will do is take our height and convert it to normal data and we just need to change now our channel to height and then set that to pass through so it picks up all the height information from whatever's below it 
and if I switch over to the normal channel now uh, if I can see it there it is you'll see we've got quite a nice broad normal there which is reshading our flat plane um, according to the displacement okay so that's a, a bit of setup and when we come back we're going to add in a new layer and then we're going to blend them together uh, according to their height or to the height in the map uh, so I will talk to you then okay so what I want to do here is um, depending upon the height uh, or the amount of displacement that's happening whether it's below a level or above a level I want to put a different material on it uh, so let's set that up uh, hopefully in a way that makes it quite quite clear um, so I'm going to drag and drop a layer onto our canvas here above my base layer here let's name this base height there we go okay so this layer um, because it is uh, we've set our displacement bounds to a high number one um, it's displacing this according to that and it's too much at the moment it's too kind of detailed and craggy so in the concrete bare layer if we go down to technical parameters we can adjust how that works so if I take the height range and bring it right down we'll get something a little bit more likely so now it is displacing and it is moving but it's not you know crazy and you know all over the place okay so now the question is how do I uh, control where this material is placed so we can do that with a compare uh, layer or a compare mask so if I right click here and go to add mask with height combination it kind of automatically sets it up for us uh, you can add them separately but yeah why work <laughs> why work harder um, so what we've got here then is it's comparing the height channel here from this layer to the layers below it according to a criteria and in this case it's greater than so as we can see we've got some white tips which is our original material basically blank uh, and that's being placed on top of our um, concrete or on the peaks of our model rather so if I switch this down to less than you'll see it reverses so now I have the concrete on the top and I have the blank uh, base layer on the bottom and if I set this to within a tolerance um, it's going to allow me to almost decide how far away it's going to be so as we can see if we've got our little plane here which is why I left it in there because it helps this visualization a little bit more um, so this red plane you can see that above and below that it's putting our concrete and if I increase my tolerance there it will get further and further away from that white line there we go oh sorry red line <laughs> okay so what else can we do with this well I mean basically all I really want to do with this now is put another layer in here um, so let me uh, pick a different one uh, some of it will look a quite different let's try concrete smooth whoops that's the wrong one sorry I clicked it rather than dragged it there we go so now we've got our concrete smooth going on our lower level but of course the technical parameters need adjusting to take our height range down to a more appropriate level there we go so now I've got two zones and essentially they are um, you know being placed on our model according to the displacement map according to the difference between the displacement on one model uh, or one layer and the displacement uh, below it so there are a few other tricks and things we can do on this and we'll go through those um, in the next couple of um, sections so I'll talk to you then
Okay, so one thing we can do here is, um, as you can see, that most of this is displacing downwards. And, you know, that can limit us a little bit. So how do we move it? What we can do is on our base height, we can add a levels um, filter and then we can move it. So if I take the affected channel, I can use my black slider here to either make it displace down more or less. So I want to kind of even up, you know, where it's displacing. Um, we can also use our top levels and the, the top level essentially will simply move it um, to give us less kind of flattening. If I do that, that's going to stretch. And if I do that, it's going to flatten eventually. Let me just undo those. Whereas if I do that on the inputs, it gives me a little bit more uh, leeway, as you say, without flattening it. Okay, so uh, since I've moved that up now and there is more above the plane than there is uh, below or maybe more of an even split, uh, I can go back to my compare mask and see what I can do with that. So with a less than, that's what I get. So everything above the plane is on our concrete material and everything below is on our concrete smooth. And if I switch them the other way, it will flip. And I can, of course, go to with tolerance and adjust my tolerance now. You'll see now that the tolerance is just going either side of the line. So it's kind of less useful in this respect because, you know, now I've got kind of bands rather than kind of just a mix. So in this case, having moved my plane, uh, I'll probably use the other one, sorry, not greater than, less than. There we go, and that uh, gives us more or less what I was after, which is, you know, that blend between the two. So next we'll come in and we'll uh, add to our mask and make it a little bit more varied, because it is very much, you know, plane based at the moment. Brilliant if you want to create like a, you know, like a river canyon, um, where the, the river is at uh, the red plane level, and it's worn away at the sides and you know roughened the rock or smoothed it um, but not necessarily great for other ways so we're just going to adjust it a bit okay so i shall talk to you in the next section okay so the easiest way to add to our mask is to simply add to the mask you know to add layers above this compare mask so I could, for example, add in a, uh, where am I, uh, a paint layer here. And then depending upon whether I'm on uh, one or zero, uh, I've just got a, a basic dirt brush selected here, is I can paint into that to perhaps take a little bit of the, you know, um, limitations of the, of the plane and just spread that material a little bit down. So it's a little more uh, graduated, shall we say. Not quite so on and off, not quite so binary. There we go. And yeah, let's just paint a little bit around there. There we go. So that's, uh, that's one way of doing it, of course. Uh, if I want to take away from the mask, I can always take my uh, paint down to black and if I paint above there, I will get some of our uh, kind of base layer come through above the line. And of course, I can paint out anything that uh, I might have painted in error. Okay, so on top of that, we can you, you can add more. You know, we could add a generator. We could add all sorts of things. So if I uh, just add maybe a fill layer and from our textures, uh, pick out a grunge. I can put an all purpose kind of grunge across uh, the whole of this to add to our mask. Uh, it might be a little bit much, that one that's kind of blanked it all out, um, but I could change the 
to blend mode to sort of bring that back again don't think that was particularly successful in all honesty I, I really don't like it so I'm gonna delete that out that looks much nicer okay so that's that um, in the next bit we're gonna have a look at blending modes uh, on the layers themselves to see how we can um, change those to yeah, make a difference so I will talk to you then okay we can use layer blending modes here to change the result of this to get some interesting effects uh, so on the concrete bare layer itself I could change that to normal and that will produce me a normal blend uh, and as you can see it's not extending beyond the red plane uh, but we're still getting the displacement below which you know you might want uh, I find it a particularly harsh one because you can see all these little spiky things um, if we go to say a darkened min you'll see that that kind of gets rid of all those and we have a more kind of you know sensible sensible is that the right word texture to uh, work with so you can experiment with all of these uh, so we could go multiply and again we get this kind of harsh uh, result uh, we can go to uh, say light and max and that um, yeah it's kind of a combination between the two we're not really getting any dis difference out of the top but in the bottom we're getting this kind of spiky effect which not necessarily what I want uh, might be useful in some circumstances but I can't think of one uh, linear dodge add is the default um, and yeah you could just try down these to you know see which ones you want uh, it's just that you know I just wanted to demonstrate that linear dodge add you know is not the only kind of fruit here you know there are other things you can use to and other things you can do to make uh, you know different effects so I hope you found that useful um, I think the yeah you know, the compare mask is very handy um, you know for positioning textures you know where you want them getting variation here and there yeah so I think it's useful and I, I hope you find a use for it in your projects so uh, I hopefully will talk to you again in another video